Hey everybody, so before we get back into this thing, I just want to start by saying uh, thanks for everyone for the views and the support. I'm sure I feel like I said this already before, but it's surprising how much it helps to see other people have interest in it and it just gives you motivation to want to keep working on it and get it done quicker because it's definitely hard to get out of here and uh, get some real progress done on it, but this is certainly helping me with that. So if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button because when this thing is done and it's running, we're going to be having some fun with it and I'll be trying to get some good videos of that. And uh, who knows, we might do something else afterwards. But um, so we'll, we'll start the video with uh, new issues. I'm not sure if I really explained it before, but I'll just say that this whole build is like bare budget build. If I can make anything without buying it, without spending extra money on fancy parts, if it works, it works. That's what's going to happen. I don't have thousands of dollars to dump in this thing. The motor alone cost me 300 bucks. The whole project so far, I'm probably $600 into it, minus the car. So moving on, we have a lot of progress, not so much on the car, but on the plans. A lot of stuff I figured out and I'll just explain where we're at right now. So we got our drive-by wire throttle body which I've wanted to go to because the cable one, I like the extra capability of the tuning and everything with the drive-by wire. So we'll start with this. Throttle body goes on like this. If you remember the plug for the throttle body sat right here and the connector is over here. So I kind of screwed up on that. So not a big deal, I can extend the harness. A bigger problem is, is that there's maybe a quarter inch of clearance between the throttle body and the brake booster. I've already gone ahead and just tapped in the brake booster a little bit, which did open up a lot. Um, as you can tell, I have the motor off of this and pulled out because what I was going to do because of the clearance issues that I'm having in between the firewall here, I was going to just cut this lip off because the inside diameter of where the throttle body is three inches, just use this three inch pipe since the bend will be smaller but I found a silicone adapter that I'm just gonna leave that now. So I'll put this back together and pretend that never happened. Another thing that I've been thinking is I might mill down the back of the throttle body to the casing of where the motor sits as much as I can just to get any more clearance to tighten it up more to the intake manifold. And uh, also I did cut this little coolant pipe off of the throttle body if I can find the, uh, here it is. Yeah, so this one's stuck out more, but you can kind of get an idea. There's a tube that just goes through the cast and it heats up the bottom of the throttle body to prevent any ice from building up. So I cut that off because it's not going to be driven in cold weather. And even if it is, I can deal with it. So now our next issue is the accessories. As a reminder, we are using the Corvette spacing. So there's three spacings of the crank pulley. There's a CTSV and the Corvette. Then there's the F body and there's the truck they all sit different so i got the the shallowest one so that i can get most clearance in the front so anyways ctsv has the alternator right here which is perfect because i don't need this room this would be a perfect spot to put an alternator and then the ctsv also has a power steering pump up here and the bracket which is perfect because that's where i wanted to put it it would fit perfectly right there again now going back to this is a budget build you look up the parts for uh, CTSV, well, they don't share the alternator and power steering pump with any other model. Alternator is like 330 bucks, power steering pumps almost 300 bucks, then you gotta get the brackets, and it's like, I'm gonna be double the cost of the motor just in accessories. So I went ahead and I started doing some looking. I tried to figure out what I can do to make this work for the least amount of money. And it, it took me a few days to figure out what I was gonna do because there there's so many options with this thing. Everyone's, uh, everywhere I look, there's a bracket here for an alternator, bracket, bracket, bracket. I saw a post also is that the, the spacing from this hole to this is the same width as um, most of the GM alternators. The thing is the aluminum block has a hole in the threads here for a bracket, but the cast doesn't. But this can be easily drilled and tapped. So doing some more looking and I found an alternator from an Astro van is one of the smallest alternators, which maintains the same uh, bolt spacing. And it also has a uh, bolt hole on the back of the alternator so I can take advantage of this other hole here to do some extra support in the back. Cause we just do the bolt, two bolts in here. It might, might break, might not. I, some other people run it, but whatever. That's, it's just, it's cheaper too. Though. Astro van compared to a, a truck alternator so that's that i'm gonna go to the lo local junkyard here i'm just gonna go pull one off a blazer or something it's 20 bucks drill it bolt it in i'll have to put maybe some spacers in there to get the correct spacing but that should be dealt with so alternator done i'm gonna go get that tomorrow and that'll be taken care of so now moving on to this is our power steering 
uh, bracket. So I'm going to be using the factory Audi power steering pump because I have it. It's cheap. It's free. I've also made this bracket already. It's rough. I'll be cleaning it up later. But the point right now is I'm going to take advantage of the three bolt holes in the power steering pump. This will slide right in here. I'll drill the holes, put my three bolts. Once I got the bolt holes laid out, I'm going to grind this up to minimize the metal on there. And then what I'm going to have to do is either weld this right on this bracket. And also, I'm not sure if I'm going to heat it up and bend this bottom half so I can get the proper spacing for the crank. Or if I'm just going to cut it, weld some tabs on each side and then weld it to that bracket behind it. But I think we should be okay with that. And now the biggest issue for last. I didn't even think of it. I've never even seen anyone have this issue before. I'll try to explain it the best as I can. LQ4 engine, crank turns clockwise. 1.8T engine, crank turns clockwise. 4L60 transmission, clockwise in, clockwise out. Audi transmission, clockwise in, counterclockwise out. Because of this, the diff in the back has the crown gear on the wrong side of the pinion. So now when we put this 4L60 in it, and I put it in drive, the car's gonna go reverse. It's gonna have four speeds reverse. So I actually got a message from a, from a viewer on Instagram saying that he figured that out. He, I guess he had it all together, and he took it for a drive and figured that out. I'm not too sure, but it's good that I figured that out because I would have had a, a drive shaft made and then the adapter made for the pinion flange, and it would have been all junk because I can't use that diff. Now I can just go and take that Audi diff out and flip it around and make some mounts. But if I'm going through all that trouble, uh, I can get a scrap 8.8 .8 IRS Ford Explorer diff for about 175 to 300 bucks. I know we're doing like a budget, but for 175 to 300, drop that whole subframe out, weld some brackets on there. I'll have to get some adapters made to use my stock axles. I know they won't hold, but if they can move the car for now, that's what we're gonna do. So yeah, as soon as we finish a few of the things on the front here, I don't wanna start too many things at once because it gets all crazy, but. So we'll get the front finished up. Once we get everything buttoned up here a little bit, we'll move on to that back. I'll just drop the whole subframe, all one piece with the brakes and diff and everything attached to it. And then all I have to do is throw the new diff in there and make some mounts and, and mount it in there and throw it in. And hopefully everything fits and it doesn't give us any issues, but. There's always an issue, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Now I'm gonna get the holes drilled in this bracket so we can finish up the uh, power steering mount. So now I got the bolt holes drilled out and we're just gonna throw it on top of here. You can see where the uh, holes travel through to the other side. And we'll just make sure that, uh, that they line up. But for now, we'll bolt this on and see where it's gonna sit. So I kinda got it set up how it's gonna sit. I just clamped the bar to the crank and then connected the power steering pump to that bar to keep it in line. Oh, and this turbo is just off the 1.8. I just put it on there because I was bored. So I'll pack it in for tonight there, and uh, tomorrow we'll go to the wreckers and see if we can find an alternator. Okay, so we're at the, we're at the junkyard now, just trying to find some alternators. We've got a whole row of uh, Blazers and S10s. And these are the alternators we need. There's a couple of them. I just want to make sure I get one that's not too seized up. That one spins nice, but I'm just going to go and cut the belts on them. Just see how well they spin, make sure they're not too noisy. Okay. And this one is C solid. No, anyone in here? Oh, this one looks a little nicer, but that one's probably, yeah. Oh, good. This one. Oh. That's a little noisy. I think that first one we got is probably going to be the best one. So I'll just go back over there and rip that one out. And I'm pretty sure these had a bolt in the back, which is why I wanted it so I can use the reinforcement, but I don't see it. It's not good. Shouldn't come out if I just pry it out. Oh, and it does. Well, that's not good. Okay, so I left that alternator down there because that's not the one we're looking for. But if I walk down the row, I guess uh, different years had different types of alternators. So this one's a lot smaller and it has the case on it for the uh, bolt hole in the back. So I already cut the belt. It does make a little bit of noise, but I'm pretty sure once we get it going, it'll quiet up. It's already 
a lot better than it was before. So I'm gonna rip this one off and uh, that should be it. So we got her out, now we're, uh, we're pretty much good to go. I'm gonna go and take a walk around just see if there's anything uh, interesting I can find and uh, we'll just pick back up back in the garage. So now we got the alternator so I can bolt that up and see how that works. I also found a uh, another A4 there and it had a brake reservoir with uh, with no line to the clutch so that's that's good now I can throw that on and not have to worry about plugging that hole so yeah we're just gonna go ahead home now and uh, see what else we can get done Okay, so I just got home from work and uh, we got the alternator and the uh, brake reservoir from the junkyard and we have some more parts here. Uh, so there's the alternator, automatic brake reservoir and we've got our Corvette water pump. So now we can go ahead and bolt on all the accessories. Um, we, I still have to get some like cylindrical spacers for the back here, I haven't looked on where to get those but I'll just find something to space this out properly and uh, bolt this on finish making the bracket for the pump and throw tension on I think that's I think that's pretty much it and the accessories were pretty much done um, I want to make sure that this isn't going to interfere with the rad support because there's still a thermostat housing that has to go on here and as you can see it does stick out eh, it might not but it, it this probably will interfere more than anything because it does stick out a little bit and the crank was pretty much flush with the rat support so uh we'll throw all that on i might might be a little difficult because i have the uh rad support way up there so and it's jammed in there so uh it might be worth it to just throw it on here just to make sure there's no other surprises and go from there so yeah now so i'm just gonna get that water pump bolted on there i'm gonna throw one bolt in the alternator because we only have a, one hole here i still need to get a tap and a, a drill and a tap for the uh, block there in order to get two bolts in but we can tighten up one for now and just see how it's gonna fit we jumped ahead a few hours here i just ran out to the shop and uh, finished up the power steering bracket so that i can get that bolted on and just to get an idea where everything's gonna sit but i went ahead and bolted the water pump up uh here's the power steering bracket it lines up pretty good uh i think i might put a i think i'm gonna get a little piece of steel from here to here and weld that in also just to add a little bit of more rigidity but for the most part it's really solid it's not going anywhere and when the belt tensioner is on it's going to be pulling it that way instead of up and down which is going to strain this so it should be good for now as for the alternator i was when i was reading online i noticed someone said that they had to grind their block but I didn't really pay attention too much to it. But as you can see, the bolt hole just doesn't line up to the block. So this is not, doesn't really look like this really does anything. This little uh, line here is where the head bolt goes down and this is cylinder. So this just seems like, uh, so this looks like we're just gonna be able to grind a little bit of this off in order to get this to line up. And then the uh, pulley doesn't exactly line up to the crank. You can see it's it's shifting off just a little bit so i'll put a, a bar on here and line it up like i did with the power steering pump and then i'll see how much of a gap there is i might get away with a few washers obviously i need a bigger belt and i still need to get a tensioner i think i'm going to end it off there for now again if you're enjoying these videos and you like what you see hit that subscribe button we're going to be doing some fun stuff with this thing when it's done and thanks for watching see you later